So when you're learning something new, it can actually just feel like you're in a great big void. So what I'd suggest is we use something that we know well to help us pick up the new information that we don't know so well yet. So let's take a clock. Unfortunately, we know too much about the clock because it pretty much rules our lives. So we can use the clock face to help learn our 12 notes that we use in music theory. So I'm just going to divide up my clock face into hours. So quarters, and then each quarter has two more hours in it. My top note is C. And then I'm going to go around the clock in a clockwise direction, and I'm going to put in the other note names. You'll see that most times I go two steps for each note name, but a couple of times only one step, and I'll go through that in another video. So we've got C, we're going to go two steps to D. We're going to go two steps to E. We're going to go one step to F. We're going to go two steps to G. Another two steps to A. Another two steps to B leaving our final transition one step to get back to C. Now we're going to fill up these gaps that we've got with sharps. So we can sharpen a C, so we go around this direction clockwise if we're sharpening. C can be sharpened to C sharp. D can be sharpened to D sharp. F can be sharpened to F sharp. G sharpen to G sharp, and A can be sharpened to A sharp. So what happens if we sharpen a B? Well, we end up on that step of the clock. So we can actually call this an alternative name. We can call this part of the clock B sharp, and we have to just sometimes. In the same way, if we sharpen an E, we go one step in the clockwise direction, and so we can also call this part of the clock E sharp. And if this is your first chromatic clock that you've drawn, stop here. If you're learning the flats, watch on. So now we're going to add the flats, which are our alternative names for these halfway notes. So just like we can sharpen a C, which means we go in a clockwise direction from the C one step, we can flatten a D, which means we go anti-clockwise one step from the D. And I'm going to put my flats in the centre of my clock. So I go D, and I flatten that to D flat. Let's go around. I can flatten a B to make B flat. I can flatten an A to make A flat. I can flatten a G to make G flat. I can flatten an E to make E flat. And just like we had that strange two names for the C and the B sharp, I can flatten a C. And so an alternative name for this step on the clock is C flat. And I'm going to put it in brackets because we just use it sometimes as an alternative name for the B. And also down here I can flatten an F. So I'm going to put in brackets here F flat as an alternative name to E. And there we have it. I'll admit, it doesn't look quite like a clock, but it's certainly got that interface, and we can get just as good at reading one of these as we are at reading one of those.